License plate readers have been on the table for years, but tonight Metro Council is expected to vote on making this reality. At least as a pilot program, the bill would give police what some call an invaluable resource, but others worry this could mean police have too much power. Levi Ismail joins us from the historic courthouse. Levi, what are people saying out the bill, about the bill leading up to the vote tonight? You know, Vicki, we heard some people make the comparisons to the deadly police shooting of Landon Eastip and how so many people are concerned at this point that by offering police officers this new tool, it may be giving them more power than they're prepared to handle. In the years since license plate readers were first introduced, practically everyone has had something to say, whether that's neighbors. I guess a lot of it boils down to how much you trust the police to use these tools. For me personally, my trust is very minimal. Or police themselves. And this is kind of a, gives you an idea of what it looks like. Officers call it an invaluable resource that could help solve Amber Alerts and catch violent criminals on the run. If you are a law enforcement agency not using LPR, you are neglecting your duty. A passing vote Tuesday could open the door for a pilot program to last six months. While these cameras will not use facial recognition, Council member Freddie O'Connell says privacy is still at risk. This balance is very, very difficult to strike. Every time a car passes by, these cameras collect data. If that data is incorrect in any way, he says it could have dangerous consequences. And off by one or the introduction of human error or a bad actor having access to this data can absolutely create risk. O'Connell and some council members say these readers may give police too much power and lead to someone being unfairly targeted or hurt. They point to last week's police shooting of Landon Eastip as an example where a show of force can escalate any situation. It's really been hard for me to reconcile the idea of um, effectively treating all Nashvillians as suspects. Councilmember Joy Stiles, who co-sponsored the bill, told us it's unfair to compare these two scenarios. She says this is not a surveillance tool and will only track data meant to solve crimes. You may catch uh, some of the fish you're after, but you might also scoop up in the net some of the people who are already vulnerable in our communities. We've also heard from Nashville's Community Oversight Board who mentioned that at this point they are not in support of the bill as it's currently written. They said that there needs to be more oversight because at this point, all the only folks who have access to what material is actually being collected is law enforcement, the DA's office, and the public defender's office. For now, reporting, Levi's Mill, News Channel 5.